What's going on everybody, Todd here. Today we're going to be installing our Low Lifter 5000 airbags from Airlift on our 2020 Ram 2500. We'll also be pairing that with the Wireless One air compressor, which is a more customizable installation. So whether you're gonna be using the airbags and filling them, deflating manually, or doing it wirelessly, this video will help you get all that installed. The tools we'll be using for this installation are some wrenches. We've got a 10 millimeter, half inch, and 9 16 We've got a ratchet and electric impact driver with an extension and swivel, along with some sockets. We've got a 10 millimeter, 16 millimeter, half inch, and 9 16 We've also got an electric drill with a pilot bit, as well as a quarter inch and 5 16 drill bit. We've got a 7 seconds and 6 millimeter Allen wrench, and a tubing cutter. Let's go ahead and get started. Mounting your compressor is very customizable. You can put it in lots of different locations. Your instructions recommend putting it underneath the rocker panel right up against the frame, but we've got electric powered running boards that retract in that location, so we decided to go for an alternate location. So just behind the bed here, there's a cross member that goes underneath the bed. We're gonna mount it there. Now, I've already gone ahead and removed our fender liner so you guys can get a better view of how we're gonna do that. Okay, so here is our cross member I was telling you about. Now, this is the very front of the bed. In fact, this is our bed, and this is the cab of the truck. Uh, so now I've already held the compressor up against here and used the frame as a template and mark a couple of places where we're going to drill up into that cross member. And then also, this is a piece of structural, structural steel we're going to drill through here and attach the frame of the compressor to this as well. Um, now, we'll be using the self-tapping bolt from our kit to go up into here, then nut and bolt in this location and nut and bolt in this location because we can get a wrench behind these two locations to hold the bolts in place. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the compressor up here and show you how it's going to line up. So that is where it's gonna go. Now, there is a, a, a hose that comes through here that I did have to dismount so I can put the self-tapping bolt up through this location. All right, so first let's go ahead and drill a couple of pilot holes. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and set the compressor in place. We're gonna use this provided hardware. I'm gonna start this hole first, get that attached, and then go up to this hole, get that one attached, then put in our self-tapping bolt, then tighten up this hardware. All right, next we need to run our air filter cartridge from our compressor. This is what our cartridge looks like. When we flip it over, you'll see it's got a plastic threaded end. What we're gonna do is take our barb fitting from our kit and thread it in place. Next, we can also take a piece of our tubing from our kit and push it over top of that barb fitting. It's a nice tight fit, so just push it all the way on. Now this part right here is designed to snap into a hole. So if you do not have a factory hole that's suitable, you wanna drill a 3 8 hole. We've got a factory hole that's suitable, so we're gonna snap into there at a high location. Then we're gonna take this end and plug this end into the barb fitting on the compressor. 
Okay, so here's our compressor. Right up here is a factory hole we can use for our filter housing. So I'm gonna go ahead and snap that in there. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and route my hose down, grab a tubing cutter, and plug that in. Okay, we are here inside the passenger side rear wheel well. Now, everything we do here on the passenger side will also be doing on the driver's side. I've already removed the tire. Next, I'm going to turn my attention to the bump stop. Now, that's held in with two factory bolts. We're gonna go ahead and pull those out and discard the bump stop. We're gonna remove them with a 16 millimeter impact. Okay, here we have our top plate bracket. We wanna make sure that we have the correct bracket and have it oriented properly. So what we'll notice is we've got a large hole here that when it mounts is going to be facing towards the outside of the vehicle. Uh, then we've also got two smaller holes. The smaller hole closer to the rear of the vehicle is gonna have an oblong hole next to it. The smaller hole closer to the front of the vehicle is gonna have a small hole next to that. Uh, so what we're going to use is uh, the new hardware to go through this hole and this hole up into the factory locations. So let's go ahead and grab, we've got some large button head bolts. We're going to go up through there. We're going to get them threaded into place and we're going to tighten them down uh, to no more than 30 foot pounds. We'll be using a six millimeter Allen wrench to do that. Well, let's go build the airbag. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and assemble our passenger side airbag. Now this is the top side of the airbag. It doesn't have a sticker on it. Also, there's three threaded locations on it. So what we're gonna do is take one of our roll plant pans. We're gonna flip that upside down and set it on top of the airbag. And we're gonna take uh, our next bracket. Now we wanna make sure this is oriented correctly. So I'm gonna point out this right here is what our fitting is going to thread into and the fitting is gonna be placed facing the outside of the vehicle. So again, this is a passenger side, so this is gonna to go to the outside. That's the front of the vehicle, that's the rear of the vehicle. So here is our plate. This part right here goes over top of the hole that the fitting goes into, and these two right here are where it's gonna thread in. Make sure you have that oriented properly. You're gonna have one square hole that's faced closer to the outside of the vehicle. That's also gonna be facing towards the front. The square hole in the back faces closer to the inside of the vehicle and faces the rear. So what we're gonna do is set those in place and get that lined up. Before we attach that, we're gonna take one of our shorter carriage bolts and slip it up into this hole right here. We have to do that right now because once we line all this stuff up, we won't be able to get that carriage bolt in. So we're gonna take our two shorter button head bolts from our kit and we're gonna put them into these threaded holes. We're going to tighten those down with a 730 seconds to no more than 20 foot pounds. Next, we're going to take our 90 degree elbow fitting and we're going to thread it in to our fitting threads. We're just going to get in there finger tight. Once it's finger tight, then we're going to take a half inch wrench and we're gonna do one and a half full turns with the half inch wrench. There's one. And a half. Now we're ready to go to the next part. All right, so at this point, our elbow can f spin freely. Um, now, I also wanna point out that this plate, if this was on the driver's side, it would be flipped 180 degrees. So this square hole would be on this side. This square hole and carriage bolt would be over here on this side. Now, let me go ahead and move this back and talk about the bottom plate that this is gonna sit on top of. So here's the bottom plate. These right here are gonna be facing down. Uh, the square holes are gonna be facing to the inside of the vehicle, the round holes to the outside of the vehicle. Now, the round hole that's towards the front is going to get 
a washer and a bolt with a nylock nut. The bolt needs to be on the bottom side. We're gonna go ahead and thread on the nylock and then tighten all that down with a 9 16 All right, now before we put this together, we need to also take our very long carriage bolts and run them down through the square holes. And our roll pan is going to sit on top of that, like so. And then our airbag sits inside our roll pan. Now let's flip this whole assembly upside down. Now that we've got our holes lined up, we can use our flathead Allen bolts and insert those into the threaded holes. And we're going to tighten them down with a 7.30 seconds Allen wrench to no more than 20 foot pounds. All right, let's go ahead and take this over to our truck. Okay, so right down here is our Jones bumper strike pad. So where the Jones bumper used to come down when it bottom out, it would hit this location right here. That is where we're going to set our uh, airbag. So what we're going to do is take our assembly and set it in place. Make sure that your large carriage bolts go down in between here. Uh, we want to make sure that it's kind of covering over top of both sides. Right now we can still kind of slide it back and forth, so we need to get it set and centered. Uh, make sure that uh, our 90 degree elbow, uh, whenever we raise up the axle, is lined up to, to go through that hole there. Um, also, we're about to raise up the axle using a floor jack. So as we do that, we want to make sure that our holes line up like so. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start lifting up the axle using a floor jack. All right, now that we're lined up at the top, what we're gonna do is for our kit, use a flat washer and a nylock nut, get that connected. Also in our kit, we're gonna have another carriage bolt that's gonna go towards the front where we don't have a bolt through there. So remember, we've got a square hole on the bottom, it's a round hole on the top, so we're gonna go through the square hole from the bottom, make sure the carriage bolt lines up to the square hole, and then attach the hardware up top. Now holding this in place, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down with a 9 16 Okay, now before we lift this up anymore, notice we still have a little bit of wiggle room. So what we want to make sure we do is this washer has to be forward of the Jones bumper strike pad. So if it's sitting on top of the Jones bumper strike pad, it needs to be moved forward. Uh, once that's in place, we can go ahead and go down below. We're gonna take our bracket. The semicircle cutout is gonna go to the bottom of the bracket. We're gonna run them up those carriage bolts, then use the supplied 9 16 hardware. We're gonna go up with a nylock and a washer on each one. Now we're gonna get them evenly up. Uh, we wanna tighten them evenly. So what we're gonna to do to get them in place first, I'm just gonna use a deep well and go up, hold the carriage bolt down into the bracket. Next one I'm gonna do is make sure that I, a little bit at a time, tighten these down to get them nice and snug. I did double check up at the top the bottom plate is nice and rested properly on top of the strike pad. So I'm going to go a little bit at a time. All right, so it's already connecting. So we're going to bring these both to 10 foot pounds evenly. There you go. Repeat the same process for the other airbag on the opposite side. Okay, so we're back at the compressor. At the bottom side of the compressor is a brass fitting. Now this is where we're gonna fit our line into. Uh, so I've already gone ahead and used a tubing cutter and cut a clean edge on that line. You can also use 
uh, a, a utility knife if you want. Just make sure you make a nice square clean cut. Um, you want to then go ahead and push that up into the fitting. Once it's pushed all the way up into the fitting, we can go ahead and start running our line. All right, so I'm gonna route this up. I'm gonna find a support we can tie this off to. All right, so now I'm gonna route it up to here. I'm gonna put one of our fittings right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'll be cutting it right here and attaching the T-fitting. Okay, just to point out, I've already got a piece of my line going through this channel all the way to the other side. That's going to supply air to our driver's side airbag. I've actually already got that connected, and this is what's hanging out this end. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect this T over to here. We're going to put this on a T as well. Uh, so we're going to connect these two together, get them tied off. Um, I'm also going to slip this wire loom over top of this so that it doesn't vibrate against this rough edge. So let me go ahead and get that set in place. We're gonna connect across to here. And we're gonna bring it over to the T. Now we're going to tie off our T, zip tie it to this piece. All right, now we can run this in out towards our bumper. Okay, so here we are at the bumper. Now what we're going to do is we're going to attach uh, our Schrader valve. Now in your kit, you're going to have some coiled up hose that's dedicated for filling manually. You got a Schrader valve on, on one end. You've actually got one on the other end too if you wanted to make that a dual system. We're just going for a single system so both lines are filled by one Schrader. Uh, so this is allow, going to allow us to manually fill our tank. So what I've done is I've found a location that's kind of out of the way. Um, it won't get in the way of our trailer receptacle and it probably won't get stepped on. So those are what I was looking for. I've gone ahead and marked it with a center punch. I'm gonna drill it out with a pilot bit and then step it up to 5 sixteenths. Then this is gonna run through from the back. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and push this through from the back side, but before we do, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of the supplied uh, hex nuts and go all the way down to the end of it. Now these are designed where you can adjust this forward and backwards. So I'm just gonna bring it all the way to the back. Then we're gonna put one of the star washers that kind of locks it in place, keeps it from spinning. Next, what we're gonna do is feed it in from the back. Now on this side, we can go ahead and install our rubber washer, followed by a flat washer, and then our other hex nut. All right, now go ahead and snug that up with a half inch. And you can install the cap. 
All right, here we are back next to our airbag. This is our T fitting that we've been working towards. Um, I've already gone ahead and run the tube along the frame and loosely uh, secured it with zip ties. Next, what we're gonna do is go ahead and cut it into place, push it into the T fitting, and then snug up all our zip ties. Okay, now here we are back at the compressor. Now in the kit, we're gonna have a wire harness. This is what the end of the wire harness looks like, goes into the compressor. Note, we've got a little red tab. Once it plugs into the compressor, we press on that red tab to lock it in place. So what we're gonna do is push it on to the compressor. Then you push down the lock and it's set in place. Now in that cable, we're gonna have four different wires that come off of it and they're all labeled. This one right here is going to go to the red wire from your compressor, the black wire is going to go to the ground, and the other red wire is also going to go to your battery. The pink wire as an optional wire. You can run that to a, a fused ignition source. You want to have at most 10 amps going to that ignition source, but what that does is that allows you to turn on the compressor as soon as you turn on the engine. Otherwise, you'll just be powering up the compressor whenever you turn on the remote. Okay, next what we're gonna do is take our red cable coming from the compressor and our red cable coming from the harness that's labeled compressor, and we're gonna connect them together with the provided connector. Um, I've already got everything stripped down, so we can go ahead and attach. All right, now this ground wire coming out of our compressor, uh, we're supposed to attach to the frame. Now they give us a self-tapping screw uh, but we actually found a quarter inch hole that's already in the frame. So I roughed up around there. I'm going to use another self-tapping bolt to cut threads into that. So I'll attach the ground wire directly to that hole using the uh, self-tapper. And we'll put that in with a half inch. All right, now what we're doing is we're pulling our harness uh, to go up along the frame. We're going on the opposite side of the frame as the exhaust because we don't want to get this harness scorched. The exhaust gets hot. Uh, so we're just going to go along the frame all the way up to the front wheel well and then up into the engine compartment. As we go, we're going to be tying it off with zip ties. Okay, so here we are underneath the hood on the passenger side. I've already got the wire harness pulled up through the wheel well. Uh, the pink wire from the wire harness, I've got that bundled up and set underneath and tied off in case we decide to use that and put it up to an ignition source later. Uh, I've already got the uh, red wire stripped back and ready to attach to a power source. What we first have to do is run it through our fuse, and I'll show you how to do that, and then we'll connect it to our power source. Um, here underneath the battery is where we're going to be connecting it. We're going to go to this one here. Uh, then we're also going to connect an end to uh, our ground wire and then connect that to the ground on the fender. All right, now here is our fuse. What we're going to do with this is we're going to take and cut right about here and then strip off a little bit of the insulation. Now we can connect that to one of our connectors in our kit. And then this is going to connect to our power wire. All right, now we're gonna be heat shrinking that back down a little bit. And on this side, go ahead and strip down this. We're going to connect this to a ring connector. I'm going to go ahead and use a 10 millimeter, loosen this up and connect it to the battery terminal. All right, 
Now we're going to go ahead and put a connector on the end of the ground wire. And we've got a ground location on the fender. We're going to pull that off with a 10 millimeter and connect that one. All right, now let's go ahead and insert our fuse. All right, we're gonna heat shrink that and tuck it out of the way. If you opted to go with a Wireless One compressor for your rig like what we did, you can go ahead and pair your remote, you can program your presets and download your smartphone app. As soon as this is all hooked up, it's gonna automatically fill your bags to five pounds of pressure because five PSI is the minimum that you have to run in these bags. The compressor will also not allow you to go beyond 100 PSI because that's the limitations of these bags. Now, if you decided to go with just the airbags and no compressors, you can fill and deflate manually. The same rules apply. Always keep a minimum of five pounds and do not exceed 100 PSI. Now, as soon as you hook up a load to the back of the truck and the rear end drops down, you can start to add pressure to the system. Now, what that will do is start raising the vehicle. So make sure you add pressure until it comes to a, a, an acceptable ride height. I've already got a PSI of 30 pounds preset into the remote. So I'm gonna press that and bring it up. Now, when you remove that load, the back of the truck is going to raise up so you can deflate the airbags until it gets back down to your acceptable ride height. Again, I've already got a preset in this remote. So I'm gonna hit the button and bring it down to five pounds. Well, that concludes the installation. If you found this video helpful, make sure and give us a thumbs up. If you wanna know more about the products, check the links in the description below. And as always, if you have any questions, call the experts or visit us online at realtruck.com.